Father, on this morning, we thank you for another day in the land of the living. We thank you for a day we've never seen before and we shall never see again. But Father, we lift up our voices this morning in our homes and our cars. And we say thank you for being a consistent God. Father, even before the hour strikes 730, we thank you now in advance for what you're about to do in the lives of your people. And Father, we praise you and we honor you on today. Thank you for my brothers. Thank you for my sisters. We are praying for leaders on this morning. We are praying for pastors. We are praying for this United States of America. We are praying for leadership on this morning. And Father, we are praying in the name of Jesus that you do something awesome and miraculous in their lives. Father, we love you on today. And we say on today, we need you more than we can articulate. But Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus because you are all seeing, you are all knowing. You are a wise God and you are too wise to make a mistake. Father, we thank you on this morning for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, God, for your loving kindness. We thank you that your word declares it is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. And so, Father, on this morning, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our families to you. We lift up our friends to you. We lift up our nations. And Father, even on this morning, we lift up ourselves. Many times we pray for others and we do not pray for ourselves. But on this morning, we are praying for ourselves as we are praying for one another. And Father, you said in your word, where two or three are gathered together in your name, touching and agreeing, you would be in the midst. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are present with us on today. For my sister that's sitting in the house, for my brother that's at work, for my brother that's in his car, for my sister who is preparing for work, Father, we thank you for a tangible and purposeful presence on this morning. This was not by happenstance, but you quickened us this morning on purpose, and we say thank you. Father, it could have been another way, but Father, we glorify you on this morning. We thank you on this morning, Father. We love you on today. We honor you in the name of Jesus. Father, we praise you and we glorify you. Father, we extol you on this morning. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you are about to do in the lives of your people. Father, we lay claim, we lay siege on you. We lay siege on your presence this morning. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you have created, you have ordained, you have anointed us. Father, with the intended perception. And Father, on this morning, we're praying that we see like you see. We're praying, God, that we walk like you walk. We're praying that we live like your son lived. And Father, we thank you for the victory in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the petitions that went up this morning that we did not hear, but you received. And we thank you in the name of Jesus that even those things are already completed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And in Jesus' name, we thank you. And Father, we thank you for what you're about to do in the lives of your people. Father, throughout this United States of America, throughout this world, God, to Canada, to to China, God, to Europe, God, to Africa, to Brazil, to everywhere. Father, we thank you this morning that, Father, you are closing the chapter to COVID-19. It is 2020. And, Father, we thank you that no virus, no day has the authority to sustain itself. So, Father, I hear you in the spirit this morning. We thank you that you are closing the chapter to COVID-19 because now this is the year that you promised us double grace 
And Father, you are bringing us into manifestation of your word. And Father, we thank you on this morning and we praise you and we honor you. Can you just speak well of him on this morning? Father, we thank you. We praise you on this morning. We glorify you in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we worship you. On this morning, if you will, hey, glory to God. Father, we honor you. We honor you and we bless you this morning. Father, we thank you for a freedom in the spirit this morning. We thank you for freedom in our minds. We thank you for liberty, God, in life. We thank you, God, that you are bringing us into an abundance in you. And we thank you and we praise you on this morning. I want you to tag somebody this morning, share, because I feel the power of God on here this morning. If you will, I've never asked you to do this before, but if you can, I want you to pick a name in the room this morning. And I just want you to take a moment and tell that person, I'm praying for you this morning. If you can, just, just pick a name this morning. And for the next 60, for the next two minutes, I just want you to begin to pray for that person in the name of Jesus. Father, we are desperate for you on this morning. We love you on this morning. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Father, we are desperate for you on this morning. If you can, I just want you, I feel the power of the Lord here on this morning. Father, we thank you. Bless your people on this morning. In the name of Jesus. Father, give us what we need for this assignment. Nothing more, nothing less. Release your predestined power, which causes men and women, boys and girls, saints and sinners, to be transformed to the very image of your Son, Jesus Christ. And when you do these things, we shall give your name the glory and the honor forever and a day. It is so in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you this morning. Anybody sense the presence of the Lord this morning? Right where you are. How many of you all sense the presence of the Lord this morning? Father, we thank you and we honor you. I thank the Lord that on this morning, he is intentional in all of his ways. And while you are praying for that brother, while you are praying for that sister, I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying on this morning that your encouragement to them is creating another level of hope and faith in them. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. Father, we thank you and we praise you this morning. We love you on today. We honor you. We thank you to every man and woman of God, to every husband and wife on here this morning. Good morning. Welcome to God Conversations. This is your host, Pastor Patrick Purcell, where we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are loving on God's people and we are watching God change lives one conversation at a time on this morning. We are praying for our brothers. We are praying for our sisters. I just want you to take two minutes. And I just want you to pray for someone on this morning. I just feel the anointing of prayer, corporate prayer on this morning. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Father, we bless you on this morning. Father, thank you, God, that you're sending fire this morning. You are sending fire in the homes. You are sending fire in our hearts. God, you are rekindling on this morning in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for your presence. I just keep hearing this morning. Father, thank you for your tangible presence. He is a replenisher in the name of Jesus and Father we thank you on this morning 
Father, we thank you, we praise you on this morning, we glorify you. Mm. We thank you on this morning. Some of you all need to be encouraged. And I want to be sensitive to the assignment of the Lord on this morning. And I want you to understand that some of you all that are watching on the, this morning, the reason that I hear the leading of the Lord for corporate prayer is because there are some chapters that the Lord is bringing closure to on this morning. Mm. There are some chapters <clears throat> that have become bookmarks in your life. And I even hear the Spirit of the Lord saying it's almost like a watermark. You know when something isn't purchased, when it's not legal, there's a watermark on it. So it's like some of you all, your process and where you have, where you are in your life. It's like the enemy has put a watermark on you. It's like you are trying to move forward. But the Lord said, you're moving, but there's something that's on you that I need to remove out of your life. And I want you to hear on this morning, Father, we thank you. Oh, Father, we thank you this morning. I want you to hear on this morning that I hear the spirit of the Lord saying to you my brothers and my sisters that I am bringing closure to chapters that you have bookmarked in your life it's almost like you keep flipping back and you keep looking at the same chapter the same photo the same memory the same hurt the last happiness, I even hear that, the last happiness, you, 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 you keep looking at the last time you were happy, but the Spirit of the Lord says to you on this morning, my brothers and my sisters, hear this, I am closing that chapter because I am never going to be able to bring you into prophetic fulfillment. I'm never going to be able to move you into prophetic covenant and completion. If I don't close this chapter in your life. So Father we thank you on this morning. That we hear your voice. And we mark this day. That this is the day that you said. You are bringing closure to this chapter. Of COVID-19. No day you told your prophet. That no day has the authority. To sustain itself. It must pass. To everything, there's a time and a season and a purpose under heaven. And Father, we thank you that during this season, we have submitted and we have listened and we have watched you reestablish your voice to your church. Father, you have removed the personalities and you have reintroduced your presence to your people. And Father, we say thank you on this morning. Mm. Father, if we have gotten in the way of your glory, if we became a hindrance to your vision, Father, we repent on this morning and we ask you to forgive us. But Father, on this morning, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we celebrate closed chapters. Can somebody say we're celebrating closed chapters on this morning? We are celebrating closing chapters. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we glorify you on this morning. I feel this flow in the name of Jesus. Sister Sabrina, Sister Bates, I see you, Sister Bates on here. Good morning, woman of God, I see you. If you all can, share this in Atlanta, share this in New Jersey, share this wherever you are, share this live on this morning, because I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, Son, I'm speaking corporately this morning. When I'm speaking to one, I'm doing for all. I want you to hear what I'm speaking to one. I am doing for all. And Father, we thank you on this morning. I was in prayer, Sister Cynthia. And I began to hear the Spirit of the Lord. And he began to speak to me. In Jeremiah, the 29th chapter and the 11th verse. And I said, Lord, well, I've been there before. He said, but you, you haven't seen it like this. And I want some of you all on this morning, before I go into this chapter, I see my Anna here. I have to speak good morning, Anna Rain. On this morning, before we move any further, 
I want you to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. There are times, watch this. There are times in your life that your heart has received a harvest that God never, watch this, that God did not produce. See, Elder Dye, it's interesting the word harvest because sometimes when we hear harvest, we always think that it's going to be something good, something exciting. But I was reading a book, and the book is entitled, As a Man Thinketh. And it says, a man's mind is likened unto a garden. Whether tilled or neglected, it must, and it shall bring forth a harvest. And there are times in our lives that if we are not careful, we will allow the test to produce a harvest that God never released. I want you to hear this on this morning. We will say, well, you know something? This must be what the Lord wanted me to see. And the Lord said, no, he introduced another word to us on yesterday. He introduced us, Michelle Tremble. He said, Patrick, I have an intended perception for you. Never heard that before. An intended perception. And sometimes it doesn't look good. We don't celebrate it. But I want you to understand when the Lord starts giving you an intended perception, then he also starts releasing his provision into, into your life. Watch this. Many of us, we've experienced heartaches. We've experienced hindrances. But I want to tell you on this morning, we are not a hurting church. We are not a hurting people. We are a processing people. I want you to understand that. We are not bound. You better hear it. We are not unhappy. We are in the midst and we are in prophetic process. And I want you to hear on this morning. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The process is the proof that God is up to something in my life that the enemy cannot take away. I need you to hear it on this morning. There are times in all of our lives as believers that we become like Job and we say, I go to the left, I go to the right, I go forward, I go back, but I cannot, I can't perceive where he is. But Job said, but he knows the way that I take after he gets through trying me, I, 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 want, I want to submit something to you on this morning. If you are being tested, it's because you have been trusted. Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost on here this morning. Listen, I, listen, I just need you to tag somebody in the room and say, listen, the Lord is about to take us somewhere on this morning. And I feel this in the Holy Ghost on this morning. Thank you for joining us because I feel the presence of the Lord on here this morning. Listen, I'm going to ask you for the last time. I want you to share. Jesus, Father, we thank you. Understand, understand my brothers and my sisters. Father, we worship you on this morning. We worship you according to who you have been to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, and who you have become to us. Father, we thank you for the revelation that we have. It gives us confidence to worship. We cannot worship you above the revelation that we have of you. So, Father, we thank you for your word on this morning. And in that word, we find confidence, we find strength, we find hope that you are all seeing and you are all knowing when I was looking at this verse, one verse this morning, I want to read into your hearing. One verse I want to read into your hearing this morning. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I want to stop right there. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give 
you and expect it in. Can I, can I read it again? And I, I feel it. Good morning, John. Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. I want you to hear it. Can you just tag somebody in the room this morning and say, the Lord promised you an expected end. I'm not going to be long this morning because I sense the intensity of the Holy Ghost. And he needs to confirm some things. And he needs to close some things. And he needs to activate. This is a morning of confirmation, closure, and activation. Hear this in the Holy Ghost. This is a morning of closure confirmation and activation when I was reading this sister Janika and I thank the Lord for keeping you over the weekend I thank God for keeping you it could have been worse but I thank the Lord for keeping you when I was studying this this morning I was sitting and I said Lord what, what is it that you want to say to the people because I don't want to be in the way he said, the process that my children have always been in, it is the process whereby I use that process, those tests, those trials, even those afflictions to produce righteous fruit and harvest. You are in your, where you have arrived to in your life now. It is because God is trying to produce righteous fruit and a righteous harvest in your life. Let's go deeper in this. Sometimes we don't understand because of how the enemy can distort a thing. That God will use his process in order to protect his prophecy over your life. So places that we would have expected to arrive by now. He says, I couldn't let you get there now because you might would have missed my protection. So I had to slow some things down. So I want you to hear this this morning. The Lord will use his process in order to protect the prophetic word over your life. You didn't miss anything except defeat. Oh my God. The word vision in the Hebrew, it means how God perceives the thing, not how we see it. When he told, when Habakkuk wrote, write the vision, he told Habakkuk, write the vision upon the table so he that read it can run with it. He literally said, he said, Habakkuk, I want you to write to the people exactly how I see their life. And if they can see my intended perception, if, if they can see what I want to do in their life, they will no longer allow themselves to remain stagnant. They will no longer allow themselves to remain in the same position. But watch this, but they will activate. They will move forward in what I've given them. Watch this. His vision always has an intended victory. Thank you, Holy Ghost. His vision is always accompanied by an intended victory. Elder Dye, this is good. I see your flags waving in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. His vision, how he perceives our life, it is always accompanied by, watch this, an intended victory. Even if we feel if there's, this is not a winning season. Even if we feel this is not a winning situation. His vision is always accompanied by a victory. Hear this. He introduces the word to Jeremiah and his children. I never saw this in the text. But he said... But I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. And they are, watch this, 
I want to give you an expected end. What, what, what do you mean? And the Lord said, because it, the Holy Spirit revealed it to me. He said, because during this season, they didn't know what to expect because what they were facing, it did not look like my will for their life. Y'all better hear this on this morning. What happens when what I'm facing doesn't look like his will, but is bringing forth testimony and glory? Whew, my God today. Listen, oh, listen, I want you to hear it on this morning. I want you to hear this. What happens, Sister Cynthia, when what I'm facing, what I'm dealing with, what almost happened it doesn't look good it doesn't feel good but then i have to identify but it's bringing forth the glory and it's bringing forth testimony in my life i just want to encourage somebody that's watching me on this morning you may have never been on this live but i'm under prophetic mandate and authority this morning to tell you what you are facing it may not look like his will but it is developing testimony and it is ushering glory and weight into your life you better hear it you better hear it on this morning i'm talking to you on this morning you are on this live for the first time. And you have been praying in your spirit, God, I need, I need confirmation that I have not missed you. The Lord said, no, I am managing you. Some of you all, I even hear in the authority of the Holy Ghost, I'm even managing your misery. And how I'm going to manage your misery, I am about to induce and I'm about to implement a greater peace that surpasseth all understanding. He is the only one that can give you peace in the midst of your storms. Because some of you all have more than one storm going. But the Lord said, even in this, who? Father, we thank you on this morning that what you're speaking to one, you are doing for all. I want you to hear it. What he's speaking to one, he's doing for all. I need you to share this again on this morning. There's a wave of glory this morning. I feel this in the Holy Ghost. I need you to hear it. I need you to hear the word of the Lord on this morning. Sometimes it's not the shout on our ring that we need. Sometimes I need the wind in the presence of the Lord to move on my heart to let me know that everything that I've done has not been in vain. Oof. You, 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 you ever been in a place Well, people try to get you to just embrace that it's okay. I don't want you to break, embrace that it's okay. I want you to embrace that even in this, there's a victory. And even in this, God is going to get the glory. Mm. Sometimes people, they, they just become satisfied with you, Brother Ricky. And they say, well, this is just the way it is. And this is just the way it is. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying to you, man of God, I have an expected end for you. Because where the people of God were in Jeremiah 29 and 11, they were serving under a Babylonian king. They were under confusion. They were bound. But the spirit of the Lord, watch this. But the Lord began to speak to his prophet. He said, but I need you to tell them. I need you to tell them something. Because where they are right now, they can't really perceive my affections towards them. So I need them to be able to hear my intentions towards them. There are times, Renee, there are times, men of God. There are times, women of God. We cannot sense his intentions towards us. So he sends a word and says, I want you to tell them that I still have affection towards them. I'm still committed to them. And listen to how he starts off Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. And they are good. 
they are good. You better hear it on this morning. Can you tag somebody in the room and say, they are good. Even though I'm dealing with some grief, even though I'm dealing with some anxiety, even though I'm dealing with some hurt, and you know how we describe hurt here at God Conversations, H-U-R-T, hindrances under righteous testing. The only hurt that I'm dealing with it is because God has me under righteous testing. But victory shall be mine. Listen, that's why we sing, I got to hold on until I see it. All the blessings he's promised me and what we've sold in tears, we're going to reap in joy. You got to trust and believe. And you got to wait and see. I want you to hear this on this morning. He said, I introduced, I introduced to them, Sister Bates, an expected end. Because you want me to tell you why, Banika? The Holy Spirit showed me. He said, in this chapter, they thought this was their end. They said, we've, we're in exile. We've been taken from our home. We've been taken from our land. We are held in captivity. We are in bondage. We have been stripped of our riches. And this must be our end but then the prophet shows up and the word of the Lord hits the prophet's mouth he said no tell them this is not their end I have an expected end for them some of you all you thought you were going to throw in the towel but the Lord just threw you a torch. He just lit a torch in you. Y'all better hear this this morning. You better hear this on this morning. You were about to throw in the towel. And the Holy Spirit said, I just passed you a torch. I, I want you to see in this chapter. I want you to see in this chapter. I'm almost there. Sister Cynthia, in the midst of a pandemic in Jeremiah, in the midst of captivity, God gave them a torch. And how did the torch come? He said, talk to them, prophet. Speak to them, Jeremiah. And tell them, for I know the fault that I think towards them. And they are good. Because they may feel at this point in time right now that this is their end. But I want you to know, he's shifting you to another glory. They are good. I'm almost there. Why are you being tested now? You are being tested because you're also being trusted. And God is developing a testimony in your life. There is no defeat in this chapter. There's only destiny. He said, I know my thoughts towards you. But I am connected enough to my people to know that sometimes my ways can add weights to their life that can cause the enemy to alter their perception of my presence in their life. There are many times, I'm almost there. <coughs> there are many times in life that the enemy will try to distort his presence in your life. Do you remember when Job hit his season and Job was going through, the Bible says that Job's wife told him, why don't you just curse God and die? And Job said, I can't curse God now because I've seen him do too much in my life already. The older saint said, if he never does another thing, he's already done enough. Mm. So Job's wife said, but I don't see God in this. I never said this before, family, and I want to say this to you. 
what happens when you can't see God in something, but he can see you? Mm. I want you to hear this. She said, Joe, why don't you just curse God and die? And he said, woman, woman, woman. Because if I sow good, Jamie, I'm going to reap good from the Lord. So Job said, even though I don't see God in this chaos, but he knows the way that I take. And after he gets through trying me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Job said, I'm in a dark season that's about the watch this, that's about to bring forth a golden moment. Woo! Can, can, can I say this on this morning? We almost there. I'm in a season of grief, but Job says to us, it's only producing a golden moment. Some of you all on this morning, you may be dealing with some grief, some anxiety, some hurt, but I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, even though it may be a season of grief, I'm about to produce a golden moment for you. Mm. Do not allow the enemy to distort the presence of the Lord in your life. He wants you to win. He wants you to be whole. He wants you to be complete. He wants you to laugh more. I just want you to tag somebody in the room and say he wants you to win. He's, he's expecting you to win. He's expecting you to win. Did you really think that after all that the Lord has invested in you, did you really think after all the trials he kept you through, did you really think all the things that he sustained you through that he was going to let you lose? No, he is expecting you to win. That's why he's sustaining his presence in your life. David said, I would have fainted unless I would have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And then Sister Pam, he said, now wait on the Lord. And again, I said, wait. Hmm. <laughs> he had to encourage himself to tell you, watch this. This is how we're going to win. We're going to wait on the Lord. And again, I say, wait. And he shall strengthen Done hard. I'm almost there. So I speak an intended perception. I know exactly how you feel concerning about the place where you have arrived because this is the key because I caused you to be driven there. Who kandamanshe ishanda da da mandiosi kidiosia. Glory to God. I'm sorry, I just have to say it like I feel it. Glory to God. He said, Jeremiah, tell them, I know exactly where they are because I caused them to be driven there. The Bible says that when Jesus came up out of the water, that he was carried, he was driven, and he was led into the wilderness to be tempted of Satan. And we are the only people that God said, I got to put you in a wilderness to show you exactly your worth. I got to show you how I can produce wonders in the midst of wildernesses. Y'all better hear this on this morning. I got to cause you to be driven. I got to cause you to be led. I got to cause you to be carried away. So you will be clear that God wants to establish prophetic definition in my life. Woo. That, that's why you go through some of the things that you go through. It's because the Lord is defining his heart. He's defining his purpose. He's defining his will. He's defining his power. 
and he's authenticating his presence in your life. Mm. He said, tell them, Jeremiah, I call Cedric to be driven. I cause Janika to be driven. I cause Lawana to be led. I cause, mm, mm, I cause Tiffany to be carried. I cause Sister Cynthia to be driven. But do you not see that every place I allowed you to be carried, every place I allowed you to be driven, every place I allowed you to be led, I met you there with prophetic unction. And because there was prophetic unction, there was provision and there was protection. And Father, we say thank you on this morning. I'm almost there. I've caused you to be driven. I've called you to be driven there to develop a new testimony, a new witness, and a new harvest just for you. My brothers and my sisters on this morning. There's a win in the wind. I want you to hear it. There's a win. There's a W-I-N in the W-I-N-D. There is a win in the wind. There may be a lot of things that the prince of the air is trying to toss and move around. But under the unction of the Holy Ghost, and I keep hearing this on this morning, I'm under prophetic mandate to tell you that there is a win in the wind in this season God is closing chapters this morning he's bringing confirmation and this morning he has activated winds father on this morning in the name of Jesus mm. father in the name of Jesus I'm praying this morning I'm praying for a woman on this morning and I hear the spirit of the Lord said you almost adapted to living with open wounds mm. thank you Jesus there's a woman that's watching me and I hear the Holy Ghost saying that this is her first time on God Conversations. And you've been on the last 13 minutes. And you're in the northern area. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying to you, you're in the northern states. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying to you, you almost adapted to living with open wounds. But the Lord said that which you were not strong enough to decree. I am declaring upon your life today. Mm, thank you, Jesus. I want you to hear on this morning, my God, today. Father, we thank you. We love you on today. Father, we love you on today. Mm, we love you on today. Thank you, Jesus. We love you on today. Sometimes we can adopt that open wounds have become our witness. But what you did not decree, the Spirit of the Lord is declaring on today. We are declaring that those that are connected to us are being healed and made whole now by the blood of the crucified one. Father, we thank you for the manifestation and the wisdom of the blood on today. In the name of Jesus. Who, Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Father, how do I function with wholeness of mind, but yet feeling like there's a hole in my heart? Who am I talking to in this morning? Mm. If you're bold enough on this morning to announce that it's you, I hear the Holy Ghost saying, I'm bold enough to accomplish this 
this work in you. There's some of you all that are watching this morning. And if this word is for you, this is your first time on here. I want you to say, I want you to confirm and say, Pastor, you're speaking to me. You're speaking to me. You're speaking to me. I know that this is confirmation. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, this is the morning of confirmation. Activation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's some things that he's confirming. There's some things. There's a particular person on here that's watching and you are listening to the Holy Spirit speak. And the Lord said, this is your morning of closure. Because your nights have been too open to attack. And the Lord said, I got to close this chapter. I got to close this chapter in your life. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We glorify you this morning. Father, we thank you this morning thank you this morning the enemy is fighting some of you all's perception concerning the promises of the Lord and the Lord said I'm strengthening it it's almost like when you go to the eye doctor and you get your eyes checked the Lord said I'm strengthening your vision I'm strengthening your perception this morning some of you all you need your you need your perception strengthened again listen the Lord is speaking this morning he's speaking Mm. Thank you, Sister Chantel. Wholeness in my mind, but a hole in my heart. Some of you all, there's a particular person who's watching me on this morning. I see you and I feel you. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, Son, she even lost confidence in me because the season corrupted her perception of what I promised her, what she heard preach, what she heard prophesied. You better hear it. You better hear it. There's a woman that I'm talking to on this morning. And this word may apply to some others, but there's a woman that's watching me. And you haven't responded yet, but I'm talk the Holy Ghost is talking to you. You lost confidence. You lost confidence. It's almost like you moved away and you said, I don't know if I'm all in anymore. I don't know if this ever is going to work out for me anymore. But the Lord said, it's working because God is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent has he not spoken and shall he not watch over it to perform it I want you to understand the reason that you are listening this morning because his process gave you protection he sustains you even in this anybody know that the Lord sustains you even when you felt like your confidence was slipping you knew that he could do it but you just didn't know if he would do it for you all right. Thank you, Jesus. Whoo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I knew that he could do it, but I didn't know if he would do it for me. You better hear this. You better, he's speaking. He's speaking directly this morning. I knew he could do it. But I didn't know if he would do it for me. But to everything, there is a time and a season. Good God today. Woo. To everything, there's a time and a season. Jesus Christ. Can you, I dare you to say it right now in your heart. To everything. To every promise, to every provision, to every relationship, to every launch, to every dream, to every manifestation, to every healing, there's a timing and there's a season. Oh my God today. And I believe that this is your moment. A moment is an appropriate time for an occasion without an indefinite end. And I believe on this morning, this is your moment. This is your golden moment. Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this very thing. He that had begun a good work 
and you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And now I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, tell them to seal it. To seal it with their speech. Where you are right now in your house, seal it with your speech. Seal it with your language. Seal it with your worship. Seal it with your praise. But whatever you do, seal this moment now. We seize it. We embrace it. We grab it. And we tell the Lord on this morning, we got to have it now. This is our golden moment. Tiffany, this is a time for an occasion without an in indefinite end. Who what he started, he shall finish. Seal it in the name of Jesus. Seal it in the name of Jesus. Where you are right now. Seal it right now with your speech. Seal it in your classroom. Seal it in your car. Because what the Lord is doing, what he is speaking, you are sealing, meaning you are coming in agreement. And the Lord said, I'm settling. And after you suffer for a while, God will settle you and establish you. For our light afflictions are just for a moment. But they do work it for us a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Sister Bridget Green, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it is so. And it is so. Who can be on Satanama? And it is so. Who can be on Satanama? And you see on a man the answer. Who shan on a man the you see can be on so. And it is so. The Lord said, begin decreeing on this screen right now. What is so in your life? I'm saying it is so. I want you to decree what is so right now. The thing that you believe in God, I want you to say, and it is so. And it is so. Wholeness. Mm, peace. Prosperity. Mm, those promotions that you be believe in God for. There's a new open door for someone on here this morning. And it is so. Closure. And it is so. Manifest manifested healing. And it is so. Provision. And it is so. Father, we thank you for the speaking. We thank you for the sealing. But now we thank you for the settling in the name of Jesus. And Sister Bates, and it is so. Now unto him that is able to do. Exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think through the power that worketh in us. And Father, we glorify you on this morning. Full exoneration and peace, and it is so complete healing for my mother. We agree and we decree, Pamela, with you on this morning. And it is so wholeness and closure, and it is so. Mm, I shall have what I decree, and it is so. Sabrina Young, and it is so. Sabrina Young, trials come to make you strong. Trials come to make you strong. And the Lord said, I am fortifying your strength. Mm. I am fortifying your strength on this morning. In the name of Jesus. On this morning, I want everyone on this live this morning. I want you for the next 60 seconds. I want you to go into prayer for my brother right here for the next 60 seconds. I want you to go into prayer for Rick and Michael right now because the Lord says there's a new launch I'm about to do in his life. And Ricky, you're going to understand exactly what this means. And the Lord said you're going to need everything that I gave you in order to walk into it and to live it out. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for my brother. And we agree and decree as a collective body of believers that what you are speaking, you shall perform. And Father, we thank you that on this morning, the shift begins in his life. Father, we shut down the spirit of torment on this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for Ricky. We thank you that every song he sang, 
We thank you on this morning that there's a harvest coming to his life. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that your presence can do more than we ever could. So on this morning, we assign your presence to his life. I need y'all to pray right now in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray for this brother, Rick and Michael. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Where he's lost strength, he's gaining power on this morning. And Father, your word declares that in his weakness, your strength is made perfect. And so, Father, on this morning, we assign strength and we assign power to his life. And Father, we agree with every prayer that his mother has spoken over him. Father, we agree and decree on this morning that it is so in Jesus' name. We thank you for a new launch and we give you the glory and we offer you praise on this morning. We bless you in the name of Jesus. We thank you and Father for your people on this morning. We thank you for every person that's on this live. Father, I thank you for the turning and the shifting that you're doing in Shannon's life. I thank you for a new authenticity that you are introducing to her. God, I thank you that you are introducing her to her oil. Thank you that you are introducing her to her voice. Thank you that you are introducing her to her sound. God, I thank you for the altar that she's created. And I thank you for the witness of what you are doing in her life. And it is so in Jesus' name. We thank you and we praise you. We thank you for the men that are on this live this morning. And Father, we're praying that you make them greater. That you build up more character in us. That you build more integrity, God. That you build more prayer and fasting, God. Your word declares all that men would praise the Lord and show forth his wonderful works to the children of men. Father, make us the head. Teach us how to lead in power. Teach us how to lead in victory. Father, we'll give your name the glory and the honor. And Father, I pray for my sisters on this morning that you are regulating what is out of order. You are regulating concerns. And Father, I thank you on this morning. You are stopping the, the, you are stopping the biological clock in order to fulfill the prophecy. Y'all better hear this on this morning. There's some women on here that you have concerns about things that are taking place in your body in that shell. But I just heard the Holy Ghost say, I'm stopping the biological clock because I'm going to fulfill the prophecy. You better hear it. You better, hear, Lord, 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 listen, where are the travailing women on this morning? Good morning, good morning, Elder Jamal. Good to see you, brother. Good morning, Deacon Leroy Miles. Good to see you. I need you to hear on this morning. He said, I'm stopping the biological clock. Because you're going to live to see this prophecy. This prophecy is going to come forth. It still has a pulse. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, your prophecy had a pulse. Before it even takes on flesh. And when we shall see him. See who? The one that I've already released in the Spirit. He just hasn't come over in the natural. There's no beauty that we should desire. But he knows his assignment. Lord, y'all better hear it. You better hear it on this morning. You better hear it on this morning. Father, we thank you. He said, when you go to the doctor, look for the report of the Lord. Because that's what you're going to see. You, when you go to the doctor, look for the report of the Lord. And whose report shall we believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Mm. My God today. Whew. My God today. Listen, I'm finished. I'm finished on this morning. I'm finished. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, I've never heard this before, Minister Thornton. He said, allow the people to release seed into water. Paul Jackson, this word was for you. This was for you, my sister. This was for you. On this morning, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, allow the people to release seed into water. Now, I'm going to tell you why that doesn't make sense naturally. 
because you don't release seed into water because it has no foundation but the Lord said this seed this morning it has an assignment and when it hits the water it represents that it just hit the current of the flow of the spirit and God said I'm about to put this thing in the wind my God today listen can somebody just say like the old saints used to say to God be the glory Woof. can somebody just say to God be the glory can we just say that on this to God be the glory to God be the glory sister Cynthia I know you feel this all in Texas anybody feel the presence of the Lord in your room this morning exactly where you are to God be the glory the smile that the enemy wanted to silence is what God is using to announce my status. Good God today. Who who was that on the who is that for on this morning? I know it's for the um sister Nicole. The one that I know. You better hear it. The smile, Sister Jackson, the smile that the enemy has been trying to take out of your life is the smile that God is using to announce your status. And it is so this is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. Woo, my God today. Father, we thank you and we praise you. I thank you that we always win even when it looked like we lose it. I was so I was so weighted this morning. I was so I was just weary this morning. But I said I gotta get to my place of assignment. And a woman of God sent me a prayer and she said, a fresh wind, a fresh anointing. And may the Holy Ghost flow in a different way this morning. And so Father, I thank you and I give you glory that what she released is returning unto her on this morning. Listen, I'm still winning every day. On this morning, the Lord said, allow them to release a seed into the water. I've never heard that before. I've never heard that before. But that means that he's about to carry it into the atmosphere because you can't put a seed in water and it live. So that means the seed it's already coming into harvest. Thank you, Holy Ghost. When the seed hits the water, the harvest is coming forth. That's it, Tasha. When the seed hits the water, it's coming into harvest. Everyone on this morning, if you receive this word, on this morning, Sister Nicole Jackson, you are more than welcome to God be the glory. Listen, on this morning, if you receive this word, I want everyone on here, to, I want you to release a $25 seed you can do it at Tiff if you can post your cash app. Sister Janika, if you all can post it on my personal page. And I'm going to give you some other ways to sow. And I want you to type water seed. Water seed. Water seed on this morning. Thank you, Jesus. On this morning, Father, we thank you. It's so much easier when the Lord say it. On this morning, you can sow. At PayPal, you can sow at Zale, Pastor Patrick P at Gmail. You can also sow at Venmo at God Conversations. You can also sow at Tiff Dimples Cash App. Somebody say water seed. That that sister Bates, that sounds so crazy. But I that's what I heard the Holy Ghost say. Water seed. So Father, we thank you on this morning that we have something to give. Listen, I, on this morning, I keep hearing the number 30. 30 people. I'm 30 people on this morning. Water seed. 30 people on this live right now. Water seed. Water seed. Do it quickly. Water seed. The Lord said there's a current in the wind. There's a current that's blowing right now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Okay, I, I need to come back on for a moment. Thank you, Jesus. There's a person who's watching me right now. You're closing on one property and there's a person who's looking for a property. And the Lord said, you just gathered up the faith to move forward in it. If that's you on this morning, I want you to say that's me. Yeah. Um, Who 
I, I want you to hear the word of the Lord. There's a person, you're closing on a house now. You're closing on a house now. And the Holy Ghost said, be bold, son, say it. You're closing on a house now. And there's another person, you just developed the confidence and the faith to move forward with the purchase of a house. If that's you, I want you to say that's me. There's also, and this is what I hear. There's a committed servant on this line. But you have an overhead every month that has become a burden to you. Brother Clinton Bowman, he said, that's me. The closing. Now there's a person that's looking. The person that's looking, there's a person that's looking. You just developed the confidence. And if, you, if you're closing, I want you to type closing. But if you're the person who's looking, I want you to type looking. Because I want to be specific in this. And there's a person that you have an overhead in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you and we glorify you. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Okay, okay. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Okay. Brother said, okay. I, okay. Listen. Listen. Sign contract on the first. Ruby Anderson is looking. Okay. Minister Cedric is looking. Allegra, I hit Allegra, this is your investment property. This is not your dream home. Yes. I, I want you. Okay. Sister Bates, all right. I want you, Sister Allegra, I want you to correspond with me for a moment. Because I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying to you, this is, uh-huh, mm -hmm. thank you, Jesus. This is more so of an investment property for you, but it's not your dream home. Hmm. There's some other things. Mm -hmm. There's some other things that you want the Lord to do, and He's going to do. Okay, watch this. She said, I'm looking to sign a contract on April the 1st. I want you to hear this. The Lord is going to expand you. I gave a word to my sister three months ago. That house is now sold. She's about to move into the next house. And when I was speaking to her yesterday, I said, where is the other house going to be? And I said, these are not businesses. These are personal homes. Y'all better hear this. And she said, right. I said, okay. So the first house is closing May the 28th. Sold closing date she's moving into the next home and she said now nah, I'm looking for the next one the Lord is going to bring her into a millionaire status I, I want you to hear for every person on here for every person on here, and I, I hear it, I hear it. I'm just trying to articulate it. Right. Let me form it. Your vision causes for you to be skilled in mathematics. I want you to say that's me. I hear, I, I hear something on here this morning. I hear something. I hear something. 
I hear something in the Holy Ghost. Good morning, Brother Kenny. I hear something in the Holy Ghost. I hear this in the Holy Ghost. There's some of you all that you want to be investors. You want to, some of you want to get into major finances. I mean, I see billions. I see billions. I see billions. I see billions. It's almost like some of you are, I see in the Holy Ghost, it's almost like you are looking around the room and it's like you are looking at the New York Stock Exchange. It's like you just numbers, 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 numbers. The reason that I had to say it it's because on this morning, Sister Cynthia Elder died, this is the prayer that I need you all to pray with me this morning. God, give them the wisdom of Solomon. Who? In the name of Jesus. Because you all did not ask God for riches. You have asked him for wisdom. My God today. The Lord know what you would do in your heart. But the Lord said on this morning, I'm going to give them the wisdom that will bring them into a wealthy place. I'm going to give them the wisdom that will bring them into a wealthy place. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Brother Kenny, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying to you, man of God, I do not know you. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord say the decree over your life that he's going to make you a king in your field. He is going to make you a king. Listen, I hear the Spirit of the Lord say there's, there's at least five in, there's five, is, it's either five real estate, or, no, I'm not second guessing. It's five investors on here. There are five investors on this live. And some of you all are quiet investors. But I want you to hear in the Holy Ghost that our prayer for you on this morning is that God give you the wisdom of Solomon. And those things that others had to go to school for, those things that folks had to have connections to understand, the Lord said, I'm going to give you in prayer. So now you can no longer go into prayer without, watch this, a kingdom a KBJ, a Kingdom Business Journal. So now you got to buy another journal. Because now this is for Kingdom Mathematics. This is for Kingdom Business. You better hear it. So Father, we agree and decree on this morning, and it is so in Jesus' name. Everyone on this morning, I had to come back and I had to say that. We are sowing this morning water seed. If that's you on this morning... I want you to say water seed, water seed. I want you to sow it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we glorify you. And we praise you. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we honor you. Thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you in the name of Jesus. I'm I'm trying I'm trying to close, but I, I just I really feel the power of God. There there's a woman on here. Hmm. I could call her name, but I won't. But there's a woman of God on here this morning, and, and, and I'm trying to finish, but I'm trying to be obedient to the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Sister Janika. Um every one of you all, this is a morning. That even if you don't feel the unction, release it in obedience. To Elder Lauren Simmons, the Lord said there's two kingdom petitions on the table and there's two father proposals on the table. The Lord said you can either have the corporate building or either you can have the one, watch this, that's the school. The Lord said you decide. 
because I've already granted you the favor. Now the Lord said, you decide, do you want the corporate or do you want the school? But the Lord said, but your feet, your voice, your hands, they shall govern well. Can somebody just type, can somebody just send a message to Lauren Simmons and say, govern well. There's two petitions, and the Lord said, and the Father said, there's two proposals. You can either have the school, or you can have the corporate. He said, you decide, but whichever one you decide, you shall rule well. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Father, we glorify you and we praise you. Sister Cynthia, you haven't said this to me. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord also saying to you, woman of God, that when you retire, you still will not know how to rest. So the side business <laughs> that you desire to start, the Lord said we're going to make good on it. There's a side business. That's, that's so funny. The Lord said even when you retire, you're not going to know how to rest. But there's a side business. There's something that you're looking into. There's something that you want to put in place that shall be reoccurring. And the Lord said he's going to make good on that also. He's going to blow on it. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Sister Chantel, um, this is the last word that I will release on this morning. Whoo! I don't know if you've been praying for a CFO. But I see the Lord aligning someone with you. You are the CEO of corporations and businesses and different things. But I'm praying because I see the Lord sending you a CFO. That's interesting. Someone that's going to be prayerful. Someone that you can trust. And someone, someone that you can trust with this vision I see it and Father we thank you in the name of Jesus and we praise you we thank you for a divine aligning in this season um, there, there's, there's someone watching me there's a couple of people watching and I'm trying to I'm trying to bring this in cause it's 845 I'm trying to bring this in but I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying to you all that some of you all have been worrying. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying worrying is never going to complement the worth of what God is trying to do in your life. Some of you all are worrying over and over and over. And the Lord said, but it doesn't complement the worth of God in your life. So the Lord said, you're going to have to learn how to cast all your cares upon him and stop trying to carry what he's assigned to his presence. Mm. There's some things that you are trying to carry, but the Lord has assigned his presence to, but you keep trying to put your hands to, and you're going to have to leave it alone. There's an old country song that says, leave it alone. God can handle it better than you can. So, Father, on this morning, we thank you. And we thank you for what you are saying to one. You are doing for all. Sister Burl Jones, let the Lord have it. Give it to him. My godmother, the late evangelist Lottie Edwards, she said, son, when you pray, don't take it out of his hands. Leave it. The old song says, I put it all in his hands. All of my worries, burdens, whatever it was, I put it all in his hands this morning. We put it in his hands. Father, we thank you this morning for your people. And for you all that have not had the opportunity, so I'm going to pray and we're going to close. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that we have something to give. And Father, we thank you that you are taking this seed into harvest. Whew. Nicole 
Nicole Jackson, you stay connected to us, sister. I see something great on your life. Father, you are carrying this seed. There is a current under this seed this morning. And Father, we thank you that you are giving Minister Thornton favor in unfamiliar places. And Father, I thank you that you're going to blow his mind. He's going to see the law of reciprocity work for him like never, ever before. And Father, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. Now, Father, what you don't give back to us in money, we pray keep our bodies healed. Keep us safe. Keep our family safe. Keep everything properly aligned and keep us in your will. And Father, we'll give your name the glory and the honor forever and a day. And it is so, being confident of this very thing, he that hath begun a good work in us shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And it is so. Listen, let me announce the shifting of the season will take place here in Savannah, Georgia, May the 28th through the 30th. We're going to have a service that Friday night, that Saturday we're going to do a cookout and a fellowship. So, Janika, you said let's do a cookout. So, Memorial Day, that's what we're going to do. Um, we are planning to have bro Brother Roosevelt come up with his team. He wants to come up and bring his business and his uh, everything. He wants to come up from Selma, Alabama. He wants to cook. And we are going to be um, pre-ordering. We want to make sure that we pre-order those plates. And we're going to be a blessing and so on to him. And the Lord is going to do all things together well. We are working on the hotel block now. Um, Sister Sabrina Shelton, I'm going to make sure that you get here since you are the mother of God Conversations. So I'm going to make sure that as the host, I'm going to purchase your ticket. So you'll have no excuse. You know, you are the mother. So we got to treat you like a state supervisor at Church of God in Christ. So we got to do something for you in Jesus' name. So we're going to make sure you're good. So don't worry about that ticket. We got it. Um, so May the 28th through the 30th. Listen, I'm going to encourage everyone on this morning in 30 seconds. I don't know where you are in your faith, but if you can get vaccinated, I've already taken my shot. There's many people on here. I'm ready for my second shot. Um, there are many people on here who have already been vaccinated. And so I'm going to encourage you all to do so. If, if it doesn't agree with you, I can't make you do it, but I'm going to encourage you to do so. Okay, so March the 28th, thank you, Sister Susan Granville, March the 28th through the 30th, we will be here in Savannah, Georgia for the shifting of the season. This is going to be a blessing. I haven't done this in a while, but on that Saturday night, we're going to do what is called, what the Lord gave me, PA night, personal agenda night. So I want you to bring you a white t-shirt. Um, it can be loose fitting or however you want to wear it, um, however you want to wear it, but personal agenda night. It's something that the Lord gave me some years ago, and I watch people be healed from cancer, watch people be healed from different things. And it's when we come to service and we decree in the atmosphere that we have a promise written in black and white. And you pick you a partner and you tell them what you are believing God for, and they're going to write it on that shirt. And we believe what God, what we document, the Lord shall perform. All right. So, Sister Mary, you all and different ones that listen, I'm looking for my brothers and listen, I'm, I'm going to do a registration because I'm going to put a cap on it. I'm going to put a cap on the service. I'm going to put a cap. But I want you all to come for the shifting of the season service. And it is going to be awesome. And then we're going to have an 11 o'clock service that Sunday morning so everyone can get back to their um, destinations. And I have some awesome men and women of God coming to join me. And it is going to be an awesome worship experience. It's going to be our kind of church. <laughs> it's, going to be a, it's going to be a blessing. So we're going to dance on these wood floors in Jesus' name. And so listen, you all have a blessed day. If you are interested in attending, um, please inbox us at God Conversations. We'll get you more information because we're going to move real quick. And I am looking forward to this, Steve. I'm looking for you being here from Cleveland and my different brothers. And we believe, yes, and we believe what we document shall be, shall God shall demonstrate. Thank you, Sister Susan. What we document, God shall demonstrate. And it is so in Jesus' name. Listen, this has been God Conversations, and this has been your host, Pastor Patrick Purcell, where we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are loving on God's people, and we are watching God change lives one conversation at a time. It is my honor and my pleasure to say, I live to love you 
and I fight for you daily. And if you know me, then you know that I love you. Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this very thing, he that had begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We will see you tomorrow morning for God conversations with students in the word become strategic in their kingdom assignments. All right, you all be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you.